SeaTech Cable Systems presents Princeton Tigers football. Today, the Princeton Tigers take on the Big Red of Cornell. And welcome to Sholkoff Field on the campus of Cornell University in Ithaca for the start of the 1997 season between the Tigers and the Big Red of Cornell. Hello again, everyone. I'm Lou Brogno. Glad you could join us for another season of Princeton Tigers football here on SeaTech Cable Systems. And stopping by before the start of today's game from the uh, Princeton Tigers radio network, the color analyst, Walt Percy. Walt, thanks for joining us. And let's do a little preview of this season. Princeton is uh, dubbed, if you will, the Road Warriors. Right. <laughs> they have to play all of their games on the road. Mm -hmm. How does the, how's the club approach the season like that? Well, that's something that I asked head coach Steve Toshis. I asked him, how do you approach that? He said the good thing about it is that it didn't come up out of the middle of nowhere. It was something they anticipated, they knew was going to happen. So, mentally speaking, the kids are as ready as they possibly can be, but it's something you don't know how to approach until it happens. Who knows what it's like to play 11 road games? It's something you do you know, maybe once, if ever, in your lifetime. So, I'm sure they're as prepared as they can be, but it's something they'll tackle as each game comes along. Well, the good news is on offense, quarterback Harry McKelney returns right. after taking a year off, and certainly the coaching staff has to feel about how having his leadership come uh, being the signal caller for Princeton. Well, that's big. I mean, there's no doubt about it. As I spoke with Coach Tasha, he said the one thing about Harry McKelney is that he is a warrior, using that word again. He really is, and he's a leader, and we've seen it before in Division One, one AA, Ivy League. Sometimes you have kids who might not be so talented, but they have great leadership ability, and they can help the team along. Harry McKelney has both. He's got great ability. He's a natural quarterback, great leadership ability, and so the question is, can he find the targets? Because he has the Ability. The strength of this Princeton team, though, might be on defense, especially in the linebacking right. core. Jamie Toddings, Tim Green, and they have an outstanding all-Ivy corner in Damani Leach. Right. I mean, the defensive backfield, the linebackers, they are solid. They've got good defensive linemen as well. They've got a Ferrara who is as a freshman sensation last year, as far as I was concerned. This year back as a sophomore, he'll be starting. So they look really strong, really fast. Everybody knows speed kills when it comes to defense, and they have it, along with the size. How do you see today's uh, game developing? What are the keys for Princeton to come up with a victory? The keys are really going to be what they can do in the air because, well, it'll be a big question mark with the weather. It's gotten very windy. It's gotten kind of chilly and a little bit rainy as well. So we'll see what happens there. But I think that if they can light it up, and I think they'll come up passing, that's my prediction. If they do that and they do it successfully, this could be a very good season despite the 11 road games for Princeton. Well, good luck to you, Walt, on the radio side. I hope it's an enjoyable season for all of us. Thanks, Lou. You too. Okay. Covering Princeton Tigers football. And the start of the long road journey starts today. Cornell and Princeton. The opening kickoff is just moments away. You're watching Princeton Tigers football on CTEC Cable Systems. It's not the crime of the century, but the fact is, tapping into the cable lines is stealing, no matter how you do it. And it causes problems for paying customers. So, in the next few weeks, SeaTech Cable Systems will begin a house-to-house -house audit to spot cable theft. And if you're one of the people tapping into basic or premium cable, well, we'd like to offer a friendly suggestion. Come on down. Become a paying customer during the SeaTech Cable Amnesty Program, but hurry, the house-to-house -house audit starts October 31st. Welcome back to Sholkoff Field. Cornell and Princeton both on the sidelines. The big red in their home red uniforms, of course, and Princeton in their road white trimmed with orange and the orange helmets. Once again, I'm Lou Brogno. Glad you could join us for another season of Princeton University football here on SeaTech Cable Systems. And sitting alongside for today's game, SeaTech's Tim Kafer. Tim, it wouldn't be a Princeton football game if we didn't have disgusting weather, right? Uh, another every, terrible day. Every time we come out, Lou, <laughs> every time we come out on an away game, we, we figure a night, nice, have a nice weekend. <laughs> Never fails. Right before game time, it's windy, rain. It is football weather, though. Yeah. This is good football weather. Uh, looking forward to this. Uh, it's more like November weather here in mid-September. It is nasty in Ithaca today. The rain is falling. The temperature has dropped into the low 60s and it will continue to drop throughout the afternoon and there is a stiff breeze blowing as well. Princeton actually won the toss but they deferred and they have elected to kick. And it's a high kick which sails down to the goal line. Philip Wendler will take it back 
for the big red, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 24-yard line, and that's where Cornell will put it in play. Here's the offense for the big red. At center is Tom Bickett. He's a senior, 6'3", 265. Jim Boyle, <clears throat> excuse me, and Tom LeBourne are the guards. Christian DePaula and Matthew DePaula, twin brothers at the tackles. Mark Dittman is the tight end. Eric Krosick starts at wide receiver, and J.B. Morasco is the other wide receiver. We'll give you the backs after this play. It's first down and 10, Cornell. The big red at their own 23-yard line. The quarterback is Mike Hood. He throws over the middle. It's complete. The catch made by Eric Krosick, and he's knocked down at the 35. The backfield for Cornell, Ryan Elliott is the fullback. He's a sophomore, 6'2", out of Rochester. Brad Kiesendahl, a senior 5'9", out of Hawley, Pennsylvania. And he started the last game of the season against the Pennsylvania Quakers. And Mike Hood starts a quarterback, a junior. He becomes the fifth straight different opening day quarterback for Cornell. He looks, he fires, and the catch is made across the 35 at the 37. And Brad Kiesendahl on the reception. It'll bring up a second down for the Big Red. The Princeton defense, perhaps, the strong suit of the Tigers this season, with a lot of familiar names returning. At the defensive ends, Griff King, 6'7", 260, and Dan Swingos. Mark Whaling and David Ferrara are the tackles. And the linebackers, Jamie Toddings, Mike Veronese, and Tim Green will give you the defensive secondary after this play. Back to throw is Hood. He swings it out. The catch made by Kiesendahl, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 45, and a penalty marker is thrown late hit out of bounds, so that'll tack on extra yardage after the successful pass play. All right, the rest of that defensive secondary for Princeton, Damani Leach, he is an all-Ivy corner for the Tigers, two-time unanimous all-Ivy, and Jerry Wilson starts at the under, other corner, a sophomore out of Piscataway. Brett Marshall and Tom Ludwig are the safeties. Cornell on a drive here, the big red, now has a first down at the Princeton 40-yard line. Not the way that Princeton wanted things to start out defensively. Yeah, Cornell really came out throwing the ball. They're, they're, they're coming right at him right here. Mike Hood is a junior, 6'2", 188 pounds out of Simsbury, Connecticut. He is in the shotgun formation with receivers split to the right. And Hood back to throw. Fires over the middle, wide open at the 35-yard line. The catch is made by J.B. Moresco, a junior out of Ithaca. Right now, Cornell having no problem throwing the football. Princeton is not getting pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, they're really spreading them out pretty good and leaving that middle wide open. That's about the third, third time that they've done that. Middle is wide open for, for Princeton. Cornell is just getting these... Nice easy passes over the middle, and you get a first down and gain eight on it. And the second, second and short here, put them themselves in a good situation. Second and two for the Big Red, a good initial drive for Cornell. They are at the Princeton 32. Hood back to throw. Now he'll run up the middle, breaks a tackle, spins away, and is down near the 20 yard line. <laughs> Dan Swingos missed a uh, tackle there, could have stopped him uh, about five yards short. Hood was able to get through that tackle and gain an extra five yards, and now they're uh, coming in up into the red zone here. Mike Hood, last year threw just 39 passes, 23 of 39 for 59 percent, had only one touchdown for 268 yards, but he gets the start on opening day of this 97 season. Now up under center, they can run right up the middle, and pretty good yardage for Brad Kiesendahl. Who picks up a couple. Kiesendahl last year had 249 yards, but his per carry average outstanding, 4.2 yards per carry, and any coach will take that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it brings up a second down and seven for Cornell. They are driving. They're in the red zone. The ball sits at the 17-yard line. Just about three minutes gone by first quarter, and Cornell trying to make a statement here on their initial drive. Trip receivers go to the right, and Hood stands in the shotgun as he looks over the Princeton D. He's straight back to throw, has plenty of time, but the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Good penetration, it looked like David Ferrara 
the big sophomore out of Ramsey, New Jersey, got his hand on it. But again, Hood had a man wide open in the middle. If it wasn't for uh, the tip ball, could have been another big play for Cornell. Now, for the first time, they got a third long here, so we'll see what they do here. Princeton defense, as we mentioned, the strong suit of their club. They return all of their linebackers. They need their defensive line to get some pressure now on Hood. It's a third down and six, a crucial play for both teams early in the game. Man goes in motion, that's Kiesendahl. And Hood looks to throw, fires outside wide open and making the catch, but then stopped well short of the first down. Uh, there's the two corners. Those are the two guys that Prince is going to need right there on that play. It was a good play by Tom Ludwig and Damani Leach right there to stop him. Now, uh, Coach Hopper is going to have a uh, decision here. It looks like they're going to send out the field goal, uh, field goal team. The catch was made by Eric Krosick, but he just couldn't get away, as Tim mentioned. Joe Zombeck is in. He's a freshman out of Westlake, Ohio, played his high school football at powerful St. Ignatius High, high School in Cleveland. And he will attempt a 33-yard field goal. The snap is good. The kick is up into the wind. It is no good. It is wide to the left. So Princeton dodges a bullet, and the Tigers will take over on offense. As Princeton comes out on offense, there's a look at the Princeton O. The offensive line starts with Bernard Marsick, a sophomore at center. He was the first freshman to start on the Princeton offensive line last year. Amin Abdullah and Brian Herdman, the guards, Justin Bennett and Jason Grafey are the tackles, and Jason Glotzbach is the tight end. Harry Nakelny is under center, and we'll give you the Princeton backs after this play. First down, 10 at the 20, and the handoff goes off tackle. Not much there, pick up of maybe a yard. Princeton's wideouts are inexperienced. Ryan Crowley starts at one wide receiver. He's a junior, and he has the most receptions of any Princeton receiver. Coming back, one, one reception last year. That's it. Philip Wendler is the other wide receiver, a junior out of Kent, Washington. Mike Clifford, a three-year starter at fullback. Jerry Gerardo starts at tailback. And senior Harry Nakelny, a quarterback out of Sayreville. And the give, fumble! Was loose. Let's see. They may say that the back was down. Yeah, they're saying they're saying he was down. I don't know about that. That was pretty. That was pretty close. That was pretty close. I think Princeton may got a break on that one. That was very close. And the Tigers do catch a break. It'll bring up a third down and seven for the Tigers at the 23-yard line. Harry Nakelny, a starter two years ago against Cornell when 22 of 28 for 256 yards and three touchdowns against the Big Red and completed 14 of his first 15 passes. Here's his first today. He delivers, catches made across the middle and a crunching hit. But it looks like it could be enough for a first down. Ray Canole makes the catch. He's a junior out of Manola, Illinois. And that, He'll remember his first catch as a Princeton Tiger. That was that was some hit. That was some hit he took there. Yeah, he got smashed by three sure. Cornell defenders. All right, here's the Cornell defense. Joe Norris and Tom Richards at the ends. Rich Sheeran and Chris Harrison are the tackles. Jorge Alvarez, John Hansen, and Dave Ahouse are the linebackers. Tom Nunes and Deion Harris, the corners. And Chris Allen and Justin Bird, he's a good one, had 119 tackles a year ago. At strong safety. Handoff off tackle, and the Princeton running game is not rolling now. Cornell coming up to make the play. Chris Allen, the free safety, who had 132 tackles a year ago, comes up to make the hit. Yeah, Princeton's having a little trouble at the beginning here, throwing or uh, running with the ball. Damian Taylor, it's the third time he hasn't had not a chance. He gets the ball, and he's, he's being swarmed under right away. Nine minutes remaining here in the first quarter. No score between Princeton and Cornell. It's a second down and 10 for the Tigers. Harry Nakelny comes up under center. Split backs behind him and twin receivers go to the left. Here is the give off tackle, and again, nothing happening. Damian Taylor carries the football. Taylor had a knee injury last year, did not play. And he just didn't have much opening that time. Princeton has not been able to run the football here. 
It brings up third down and 10. Well, knowing Steve Toshis and his coaching philosophy, he cannot be happy with the way the Tigers have come out running the football. That's a very important element of the Princeton offense. Trip receivers go to the right, and McKelney stands in the shotgun formation. He's back to throw, has protection. He fires, and it is caught. Catch made at the 43-yard line, an excellent throw, and a good route by Philip Wendler, the junior out of Kent, Washington. That's enough for a Princeton first down. That's, a, that's, another, big, that's another big play on third down for the Tigers. They need, they, they need to get some confidence here. A lot of young guys, probably a few uh, butterflies in the stomach uh, for a lot of these players. Receivers split left and right, but the Tigers come up in the eye formation. Mike Clifford is the fullback. Now he shifts out of the eye. And Nikelny fakes the handoff play action. He's looking long, double coverage, and it is incomplete. Intended for Wendler, but really no chance. Tom Nunes and Chris Allen offered double coverage on the post pattern. I think Nikelny saw that. He, he kind of threw that, that one away. Runs up a second down and 10. Harry McKelney was the Ivy League's top passer in 1995. 1,442 yards, nine touchdowns. He completed 54% of his passes. But more important, the most important stat that I think Steve Toshis would look at is Princeton was 12-3-1 in that's, games that McKelney started. That's, that's real big. Again, play action. He dumps it off the Clifford, the fullback, makes the catch, reverses his field. Clifford's at the 45, and he is dragged down in Cornell territory at the 42-yard line. Two excellent plays there. McKelney delivering the pass and taking the hit, and Clifford in the open field. They did a good job setting up that screen, and Clifford uses blockers well, cut across the grain, and had a lot of open spaces to go, go and get up to uh, inside the Cornell territory. So now Princeton moving the ball on their initial drive after Cornell drove to the Princeton 23 and then missed a field goal. It's first down and 10. The Tigers in the I formation at the big red 42. Handoff up the middle, spinning is Clifford and he's banged down hard. He spun away from the initial hit, but then John Hansen, second team all Ivy linebacker for Cornell, put him down. Pick up a perhaps a yard, so a second down and nine for the Tigers at the Cornell 41. 6.54 and counting down here in the first quarter, and no score between Princeton and Cornell. Ray Canole is split to the right, and Ryan Crowley splits, splits left. But the pitch goes to Taylor, hit and dropped. Great penetration again. And again, it is John Hansen. He has started every game since he's been here at Cornell since his freshman season. He's an outstanding player. And he makes it, makes it through the season, you know, any injury, 40, 40 game starting Ivy League. That's uh, kind of a new commodity uh, in the last few years, uh, since they've allowed freshmen the last few years to, to play on the varsity level. A solid performer. Tim, he had 154 tackles last year. 90 of those were solo tackles. And he's having a heck of a first series here, coming right out of the shoot. Third down and nine. And looking to throw to Kelney. She sprints out. Now he throws outside to a secondary receiver. That's Clifford. He makes the catch inside the 40 at the 38. That was not McKelney's primary receiver. He was looking downfield, but dumped it off to Clifford. It looked like he had Ryan Crowley open for a, a moment over the middle, but that kind of closed up real quick, so made something. Uh, Steve Tosh is his first major decision now, fourth down and four, and it looks like he will punt. Matt Evans comes in. Matt Evans is an all-Ivy League punter. Interesting, he missed spring practice. He played baseball for the Princeton Tiger baseball team. It's a high snap. He gets a line drive kick away. It bounces, though, into the end zone. It's not exactly what he was looking for. And not Cornell will get it at the 20. 
So both teams were able to move the football early on, but no points. So Cornell gets the football at the 20-yard line. Cornell under Jim Hofer, his eighth season, 39 and 31. He has beaten Princeton three times, three and four against the Tigers. And he has high hopes this year. He has 17 returning starters coming back. A high snap, but a good job now by Scott Carroll, who's in at quarterback. So the question is, will we have rotating quarterbacks for Cornell? Hood started the first series, but Scott Carroll, last year's starter, comes in for the second series. Kind of reminder of, uh, for a lot of Tiger fans of the situation with Harry McKelney and Brock Harvey a few years back. Worked well for Princeton, uh, led him to a championship. Well, certainly, it can't be a situation where Hood didn't perform. He drove the team in the first series, so it has to be almost a twin starter rotation. That throw over the middle, that catch is made across the middle. Pat Dutton, backup wide receiver for Cornell. Well, Scott Carroll, a senior, stood in there nicely. He's a senior out of Ridley Park, Pennsylvania. His stats a year ago, over 1,500 yards, nine touchdowns, completed 47% of his passes. But one of the key stats, which I'm sure that Jim Hoffer was not uh, thrilled about. He had 13 interceptions, and that's something that Carroll must cut down on. Third down and one. Carroll keeps and dives across the 30. That should be enough for a Cornell first down. And it is. The big red will move the sticks. 4.45 remaining first quarter and no score. Both teams were able to move the football. Cornell's initial drive ended in a missed field goal and Princeton's initial drive ended up in a punt. Scott Carroll calls the signals with twin receivers to the left side. He looks to throw over the middle and wide open across the 45 yard line. Here's Eric Krosik. Krosik has now caught passes in 21 consecutive games. Last year he had 53 receptions, five touchdowns, but his per catch average nearly 15 yards per reception. Cornell again in the shotgun. They've only had two running plays so far, Lou, and they were both quarterback draws. They're, they're really throwing the ball around the ballpark here. This is a handoff off of the shotgun. Justin Bush, a sophomore. Bush is a New Jersey kid from Tom's River, played at Tom's River East High School. Getting some action here for Cornell. Cornell runs out of what they call a pro eye, but we haven't seen too much of the eye. Here in the first quarter, most of it has been split receivers. They're really spreading the field. Carroll comes up in the shotgun again, back to throw. Again, he has time, but he threw that one behind his intended receiver, intended for Justin Bush. Well, the Tigers have really yet to get any kind of pass rush on either yeah, Cornell well that, quarterback. Well, that time David Ferrara got, got to him, he rushed him a little bit, and then he had, a, again, Cornell receiver wide open. I think uh, Ferrara was able to rush him a little bit, and, and that's been, really, that's all you need. You need to get some, uh, you need to get a hat on him once in a while. Three and a half left, first quarter. Still no score between the Big Red and the Tigers. Here's Carroll looking to throw, third down and eight, he dumps it out, he has a receiver. And that's Bush, and he has enough for a Cornell first down out of the 43-yard line of Princeton. That's a real good catch by Bush, and a big catch, too. That, that ball looked like it was going over his head, made a great catch and a nice run and get the first down for the Big Red. And the rain comes down harder now at Showcott Field. It is a miserable September afternoon. Artificial turf here at Cornell, one of the few fields in the conference with artificial surfaces. Hand off to Bush. 
He's hit and dropped at the 40, but he picks up about three yards. Tackle by Jamie Toddings. Jamie Toddings, an honorable mention, all Ivy League linebacker a year ago out of Barnegat, New Jersey. Second down, seven. Cornell twice now into Princeton territory, but I'm sure that Jim Hopper is looking to get some points. He likes the drives, but points, that's what counts. Carroll, this time he is hit, and he delivers nicely. Bush makes the catch at the 35. That time, Princeton did get pressure on the quarterback. David Ferrara, again, he did a good job, came right up the middle, got right in his face, but he was, he was able to get it off the Bush, Bush makes a nice catch, and he gets hit hard, too. So Princeton, Princeton defense looks like they're settling down a little bit, uh, but now, again, they're, uh, they're getting to the point now where they're going to have to, to stop them here. Third down and one. A big play for both teams. The Princeton defense looking to hold. Cornell at the 34-yard line. One set back behind Carroll, and he gives to Bush, who breaks a tackle and drives ahead for what looks to be enough for another Cornell first down, and it is. They'll move the sticks. This telecast of Princeton University football is sponsored in part by McCaffrey Supermarkets. McCaffrey's, there is a difference. McCaffrey Supermarkets are committed to maintaining the highest standards in fresh meats and poultry. McCaffrey's uses only USDA inspected prime and choice meats as well as certified Angus beef in all their stores. McCaffrey's a supermarket experience in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania. Terry, Terry Smith running the football for Cornell. Mike Veronese on the tackle. Veronese starting a middle linebacker, a junior, six foot 195, out of Dyer, Indiana. Short pickup of two. It brings up a second down and eight. The ball is inside the 30. Cornell's second good drive of this first period, but we are still scoreless. Scott Carroll. A high snap, back to throw, dumps it out, wide open is Kiesendorf. He's at the 15, the 10, and knocked out of bounds inside the five-yard line. There was no one within 15 yards of Kiesendorf. I don't know, there may have been a mix-up there. Tim Green looked like he was coming in on a blitz, and, and as soon as that pass was coming to his end, he he tried to retrieve or retrieve back to Kuykendall, but it, was, it just wasn't there, and it was wide open, and, and uh, he made a good play to stop him at the two-yard two line. Cornell with a first down and goal at the two. J.B. Moresco goes wide right, and Eric Krosik is wide left. Carroll with one setback beside him. He'll throw. He looks, dumps it out. Oh, uh. Kiesendahl was wide open at the two-yard line. He was so open that he took his eye off the ball and dropped a sure touchdown pass. I think Keaton Dahl couldn't believe how open he was. He was no one around him. There was no one around him. He makes the catch, he's, he waltzes in. Keaton Dahl with four receptions, just four receptions a year ago. He's the starting tailback here this year for Cornell. He'll remember that one. It is a second down and goal at the two and a half yard line. 57 seconds remaining first quarter. Cornell looking to strike first. The big red with an opportunity. Carroll looks. He fires. Incomplete. Off of the hands of the big tight end, Mark Dittman. Dittman, a junior, 6'5", 244. Out of Cleveland, he also played at St. Ignatius High School. The legendary St. Ignatius, number one high school team in the nation they beat Berwick a few weeks ago and not only did they beat them they crushed them it was like 37 to 6. Cornell now big play this is a third and goal at the two they send trip receivers to the left they have no intention of running the football Carroll looking to throw now the run he's hit and dropped, good job by the Princeton defense. So does Cornell now kick a field goal? This is a big play in the game. Yeah, Cornell is doing a good job of throwing the ball. Uh, looks like they're going for it here. Looks like they did a good job throwing the ball all the way down. 
you get this part of the field, you want to throw the ball. Big advantage to Princeton defense is let's field the cover. The Cornell crowd is on its feet. It's a fourth and goal at the two. Full house backfield behind Carroll. And he fakes the handoff. Now he'll throw. It is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Princeton with a brilliant defensive stand. And an excellent play by Tom Ludwig. Ludwig got his hands on it and almost picked it oh, off. Oh, and if he does, he is gone. That is a, it's a huge play by the Princeton defense. Stop him again. With eight seconds left. They're going to get out of this first quarter, not, not giving up any points. Still tied. They have a chance now to maybe get themselves a long drive, get this game under control a little bit. Princeton had a first and goal at the Cornell 2. And the Tigers came up with a brilliant goal line stand. Let's see if that carries over. Now the Tigers in a hole offensively with eight seconds left in the quarter. They come up in the I formation with a first down at the two. Here's the flip and off tackle. Pretty good yardage for Mike Clifford. He picks up a couple, gets out to about the seven, and that's the last play of the first period. One quarter complete in Ithaca. The score, Princeton nothing, Cornell nothing. You're watching Princeton Tigers football on C-Tech Cable Systems. Has a second down at about six at the six yard line. The flip goes out to Damian Taylor. Good run. And he has a Princeton first down. He's across the 17 yard line. Good offensive surge by the Tigers offensive line. Lou Grogno joined by Tim Kafer here at Shokoff Field. No score at the end of the first quarter. Both teams are able to move the football, but no points. Yeah, th these last two plays are a real good sign for the Princeton offense. Their bread and butter, and Coach Stosh is, it's always run first. It's, and there's two big plays, get them out of the goal line. Now they can operate a little bit. With Damian Taylor, get him going a little bit here, and then maybe open it up for, uh, for Mr. McKelney and get the uh, receivers involved here. Twin receivers are split to the left, and split backs also behind Harry McKelney. Play action rolls left, and it's incomplete. Tried to deliver out to Ryan Crowley. Crowley was open, and you saw that Harry was upset with himself after that pass. Threw a little behind him, and then uh, Crowley lost his footing, and they kind of ruined the whole play there. Harry McKelney, outstanding kid. Excellent quarterback as well, but I followed Harry for a long time. Played his high school football at Sayreville and led the Bombers to a couple of state championships. He's excited about this season. He is in complete control now as the quarterback and looking to get something going offensively here for the Tigers. Straight back to throw. Fires, delivers, and completes. Pass probably should have been caught. Jerry Gerardo had it in his hands, but couldn't hold on. Gerardo is a sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. He gets the start at tailback. His high school football team was the number one team in the state of Florida his senior year. So he knows a little bit about winning. Here's a key play, third down and 10 at the 14-yard line. McKelvin straight back to throw. Now he steps up, delivers, and the pass is complete, and it's close to the first down. What a gutsy play by McKelney. He stepped up away from the pressure, and he took quite a blow. I'll tell you what, that was, that was he did a lot of patience there. A lot of pressure on him, just stepped up in the pocket, nice and easy, threw it in there, and now Princeton's got a first down. First down and 10 at the 24-yard line. The Tigers had the ball at the two, so they have moved nicely. Twin receivers again come out to the left side, and the Tigers come up in the eye formation. Now they jump out of the eye. Clifford, the fullback, in the slot. Here is the give to Gerardo. He's hit and pummeled at the line of scrimmage. Really not able to get up ahead of steam. Dave Ahouse. The outside linebacker came over to make the tackle. And Princeton is, I think, tired of seeing Ahouse. Last year, he had 13 tackles against the Tigers. 
He's a senior out of Boyceville, New York. And the temperature continues to drop here. I don't know about you, Tim, but I'm downright cold. I'm ready for my second <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> What happened to that 80 degree weather we had in New Jersey last I, I, week? I miss it. <laughs> Second down and nine. McKelney looks, he fires. It is nearly picked off. A dangerous pass in the flat. Aaron Vanderkay, backup senior right corner, almost picked it. Yeah, well, McKelney got hit on right as he threw that ball. It was a little off. Third down and nine at the 25. Again, another third and long. Princeton's been able to convert on these third and longs. And again, twin receivers come out to the left side as McKelney looks over the Cornell D. McKelney looks to throw. Now he's in trouble. He'll run out of there. And he's caught from behind. He had real estate in front of him. Looked like he might pick up the first down, but Dave Ahouse caught him from behind. Yeah, he did. He had, he had a good job. He caught, he, he caught, made up a lot of ground quick on the county. And the county looked like he had no problem making that. And Ahouse on the blitz was able to catch him from behind. And uh, Princeton's again in a punting situation. So the Tigers must kick it away. Matt Evans is in punt formation, the junior out of Bel Air, Texas. He stands at his 15. It's a high snap, but he does get it away. Another line drive kick that bounces away from Chris Allen. Now he has an angle, turns it at the 40, and is knocked out at the 50-yard line. Damani Leach came over and maybe saved the touchdown as he knocked him out. And Cornell's in business, though. They start at midfield. Two. That line drive punt will kill you every time. And it bounced a couple times. It looked like Princeton had it pretty well covered, but uh, but Allen or uh, Allen was able to uh, just beat Vernucci Vernu to the corner, and uh, Monty Leach had to knock him out just uh, short of midfield at the 49. First and ten at the 49. Cornell. Now is Mike Hood at quarterback. So indeed the Big Red rotating their quarterbacks. Hood looks to throw, has protection, fires in, the catch is made. Hood got crushed oh. by David Ferrara, but he delivered to J.P. Moresco. Yeah, he's, he, he, stu he stood in there tall, but Ferrara really lowered the boom on him. He, he was able to get a nice pass off. We're, well, they're just short of the first down here. It'll be second and short. Boy, both of these Cornell quarterbacks impressive. Standing in there nicely. The ball is marked at the Princeton 41. It's a first down for the Big Red. And twin receivers now split to the left. And perhaps the skies are brightening a little bit. Maybe just my imagination. First and 10, Cornell. Hood is going to run. He runs right up the middle into the official. And then everybody pops up well luckily the official the umpire not injured on that play that's dangerous yeah he did a good job stuffing that play though for the for the Tigers <laughs> he was the 12th man on the field for Princeton that time but Hood just took it right up the gut he saw an opening in the middle of the Princeton defense 11 and a half remaining second quarter no score between the Big Red and the Tigers Opening day of the 1997 Ivy League season. And obviously, it's a very important game for both teams. Twin receivers go to the left, fake handoff. Now it's a naked bootleg for Hood. He's at the 20, 15, and knocked out of bounds. That's an excellent play for Cornell. That had, that had the whole Princeton defense going to, the, going to their right. There was nobody out there. There was nobody out there, and Hood, Hood had a blocker and, and made a big gainer out of it. The ball marked now at the 13-yard line, first down and 10, Cornell. They're familiar with this. This is the third time that they've been down in the Princeton red zone. They haven't come up with any points yet. Hood looks to throw. He fires. Catch made. Very good defensive play. 
Tom Ludwig was out there. He saw that coming the whole time. Just yeah, he jumped right on it. Excuse me, Tim. Justin Bush on the tackle. And you're right. Tom Ludwig saw that play coming. You know, Ludwig has started 25 straight games coming in. 55 tackles a year ago and nine career interceptions. Second down 11. Trip receivers go to the right and Cornell with the football at the 15 yard line. The throw in the end zone. Big Red breaks on top. Extra point, Joe Zombeck. He kicks it up. It is good. So with 10-24 remaining here in this second quarter, it is Cornell 7 and Princeton nothing. Well, Cornell finally puts one in the cookie jar. They've been down here three times. They finally, they finally get some points on the board. Now uh, Coach Tosh has have to get the offense going here and come right back with something. It's big for the Princeton to have a Necessary score, but they get a good drive going here. Try to keep them, try to keep them in the game. Give the defense a little chance to to uh, calm down a little bit. Well, Princeton needs to uh, settle themselves down, as you mentioned. And they now trail seven nothing after moving the football successfully, but not getting any points here in this first half. This is a great rivalry, of course, as all of these Ivy League rivalries are. Cornell and Princeton playing for the 80th time, the first meeting in 1891, and Princeton leads this all-time series with 50 victories to Cornell's 27. Last year, one of the most memorable games right here on this field, a double overtime affair, which Cornell won 33-27. And that was a big game for Cornell because they were down, they were down big late and were able to come back in the fourth quarter, tie the game, and then of course go on to win in overtime. Ten minutes and 24 seconds remaining, second period, and Cornell will kick left to right on your screen. Damani Leach is back deep. Leach, a tremendous athlete. We mentioned an all Ivy corner. And also two years ago, an all American cornerback. Zombeck will kick. High kick that Leach takes at the 10. Damani Leach at the 20. Up the middle, breaks a tackle. He has one man to beat and gets away. He's at the 50, to the 40, and he is driven out of bounds at the 30-yard line. What a run back for Damani Leach. And Princeton is in great shape here in Cornell territory. Uh, that was a good time for that. You want your big players to come up at big times. Princeton needed a big play. There it is, Damani Leach. Well, we mentioned he's such a tremendous athlete. And if he's going to be running kicks back this year for Princeton, what an added dimension that gives to the Tigers. Let's see if Princeton's offense can take advantage. The Tigers come up with a first down and 10 at the Cornell 27-yard line. Split backs behind Harry McKelney, and he pitches to Damian Taylor. He's tripped up by the line of scrimmage and dumped. Joe Norris, a junior out of Hanson, Massachusetts, Makes the tackle. A loss of one. It'll be second and 11. And here comes the rain again. Did I say that the skies were brightening before? Uh, not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> eye formation for the Tigers. Now they jump out of the eye. McKelney, quick three-step drop, and he fires outside. Catch is made down near the 20-yard line. McKelney to Drew Faulkner, backup wide receiver, a junior out of Ohio. 
now a big play for Princeton. They, they want to keep it going here after that big kickoff return. I don't think they want to settle for a field goal. They're looking for the touch. Third down and four at the 20 yard line. And besides, at this point, it would be a pretty deep field goal. It'd be about a 37 yard field goal. High formation. McKelney looks over the D. They pitch it. And off tackle, and then breaking a tackle is Taylor. That's an excellent run by Taylor, who was hit at the line of scrimmage by Chris Allen. But he, he dragged Allen for the extra yardage and picks up the first down. Did a good job there. It was uh, one, of the few, one of the few times today that Taylor's been able to get going. It's, it seems like every time he's getting the ball, he doesn't even have a chance to get going. He got a full head of steam there and was able to bull his way to the first down in a real, real big play here. So the Tigers have a first down and 10 at the Cornell 14-yard line, their deepest penetration of the game. McKelney gives up the middle, and again, breaking some tackles and spinning is Damian Taylor. So Princeton now able to run the ball much better than they did in the early portions of the first quarter. Princeton has 11 new starters this year on their club. And the Tigers trying to get some cohesiveness on offense. Many of those new starters are on the offensive side of the football. Twin receivers to the right side. McKelney looks to throw on a second down play. That one is incomplete. He bounced it at the 10 yard line. He really didn't have a receiver open. He might have thrown that one into the ground on purpose. It didn't look like it slipped out of his hand, Lou. I, I think he was looking for something that wasn't there. He figured throw it away or we're, we're down. We're down inside the, the 20. We got a third down. We've been doing pretty good on third down. Let's take our shot next play. Seven and a half remaining second quarter. Cornell seven and Princeton nothing. The Tigers with a key third down play. Third and eight. The ball sits at the 12-yard line. McKelney looks to throw. He fires end zone. It is incomplete. Double coverage down there. Intended in the corner for Ryan Crowley. And it will bring up a fourth down. So Princeton will have to settle for the field goal attempt. Alex Cirque is in. Cirque was the kicker two years ago, primarily for Princeton. And then last year, Cirque and Ben Molinix split the place kicking duties. Cirque is a junior out of Bettendorf, Iowa. And this will be a 27-yard field goal attempt. The snap, the kick is up. It is good. So Alex Cirk puts Princeton on the board with seven minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the second quarter. It's Cornell seven and Princeton three. This telecast of Princeton University football is sponsored in part by McCaffrey's Supermarkets. McCaffrey's, when they say fresh baked, they mean fresh. Baked from scratch by their talented professional bakers and pastry chefs right in their stores. McCaffrey's Supermarkets offer a wide variety of gourmet cakes, pastries, and breads. McCaffrey's, a supermarket experience in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania. Princeton get some points after the long drive. Not exactly what they were looking for. I think they were thinking six, but they'll take the field goal. Oh, they'll take it. The first, I think the first points are always the toughest to get. It's still a lot of game left here. Get the points. Weather's starting to turn a little ugly here in the way the uh, offense that the Cornell has been running here. Maybe, maybe this weather will help the, the Tigers out down the line here. Here's the kick. It's a line drive kick that Allen takes at the 10-yard line. At the 15, he breaks a tackle, gets into the clear, puts his head down, and rolls across the 30-yard line. Damani Leach on the tackle. Boy, Damani Leach doing everything. And, you know, it's tough because he's such a great athlete, 
you really need him to be on the kickoff return and the kickoff team, but you'd hate to lose him down the line because he is an all-Ivy League corner. And a very good corner. Twin receivers go to the left for Cornell. <laughs> Cornell not looking to run the football here. A couple of yards for Carroll. He runs out of there and picks up a few. But, you know, you got to wonder if Cornell based their game plan on the fact that last year Princeton was extremely tough against the run. They gave up only two and a half yards per carry. And maybe the Cornell coaching staff thinking, listen, the way to beat Princeton is through the air. And the handoff from the shotgun, and that time not much yardage. Brad Kiesendahl picks up a couple, and now Cornell thinks with a third down very quickly. It'll be third down in about five. This is big for the Princeton defense. To get, to get a three and out at this point would be big for them. Uh, it, it looks like, as you were saying, the way that uh, Cornell was coming out, I don't think Princeton was expecting that, that, kind, of, that kind of attack. The, you know, the, the shotgun every down spreading to the field out the way they did. Looks like they're settling it down a little bit, but it's big here to get a three and out. Trip receivers go to the right side. And Carroll in a quarterback. The senior looks. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. So the Princeton defense holds big that time. Following the field goal, they force Cornell three and out. Now the big red has to punt. This will be the first punt of the afternoon for Cornell. Charles Watson, junior out of Atlanta. He averaged 38 yards per kick last year. And uh, guess who? Damani Leach is back deep at the 20-yard line for Princeton. The Tigers hoping for a similar result on the pump return as to the kickoff return they just had. It's an end-over-end -end kick that Leach will field. He fumbles, picks it up, and is dragged down across the 25. That almost was a very costly play for the Tigers. So Princeton gets the football at their own 25-yard line. You know, the Princeton Tigers under head coach Steve Tashis, he is now the dean of Ivy League coaches in his 11th year, 64 career wins, three Ivy titles in his last seven years. He has just done an outstanding job at Princeton. Seven and three against Cornell. Last year, only the second losing season for Princeton in 10 years. They were three and seven, very uncharacteristic. They're not looking for that this year. McKelney looks to throw. He fires long, has a receiver wide open. It was Damani Leach. But Leach got held up on the sideline and never got downfield. Leach doing offense, defense, a la Deion Sanders a little bit. Well, they put him back on the bench. That's going to be one tired young man at the end of this game. Second down 10 at the 25-yard line. McKelney calling the signals with twin receivers. Left side handoff goes up the middle and not much. Bruce Herb, number 24, sophomore out of Paquanic, New Jersey. Played at high school at one of the state's outstanding schools for high school football, Wayne Hills High School. Brings up a third down and 11. Well, Cornell went three and out. Now Princeton is threatening to do the same. Big play for the Tigers. They have a third and 11 at the 25-yard line. And now McKelney calls a timeout. He didn't like what he saw on the defensive side of the ball for Cornell. Looked a little, a little confusion on the Princeton side, too. It was a, uh, Bruce Herb was, uh, he didn't, uh, really, didn't really sure where he wanted to go there. Um, so they had to burn a time out there. But this is this is a big play for Princeton, a third, a third and long. And uh, the wind is really starting to whip here. It's starting to get a little ugly here. <laughs> You're not kidding. It is a uh, nasty day for the 20th of September. Boy, you think you're going to catch a break, you know? 
come up to Ithaca in September. That should be nice, fall foliage. <laughs> Let's try temperatures in the uh, 50s and dropping rapidly with uh, cold rain and wind. <laughs> need a call. We need a coffee run soon. <laughs> Four minutes and 53 seconds remaining here in the second period. And Cornell leads seven to three. Tigers with a key play, third down 11. Twin receivers come out to the left side. And Harry McKelney, a quarterback, the senior out of Sayreville, looks over the Cornell D. From the shotgun, he sets up a screen. The catch is made, but Ryan Crowley came across, made the catch, but he picked up maybe a yard, and that's about it. So Princeton has to punt. And Matt Evans into kick. And the kicking game becomes a dangerous part of this ball game with this weather. The field is slick. And the ball obviously will be wet. It's been raining since the outset of the game. Evans, line drive kick that goes over the head of the deep receiver. It bounces at the 20. And Bush dives down at the 25. We've had a lot of line drive punts in this game. That's a third line drive kick in a row for Evans. Oh, well, he's kicking into the wind. I mean, he, did, he did get the distance on that. That's a good punt, uh, considering the wind in his face, wind and rain in his face. Um, Cornell start here at the 20, their own 25. At the 25, the big red comes up to the offensive line of scrimmage. Now Mike Hood in at quarterback. He's the junior out of Simsbury, Connecticut. Rotating quarterbacks for Cornell, and that's a bad snap up over his head. He throws over the middle. Catch made by Krosik. A very good job by Hood. Kept his composure after the tough snap and was able to deliver over the middle. Now on a second down and three, ball marked 32. Hood barks the signals again out of the shotgun, and Cornell has used the shotgun on just about every passing play. Bush makes the catch over the middle, breaks a tackle across the 45 and near midfield. A good run by Justin Bush after the catch, and Cornell's in business. They have a first down and 10, just shy of the midfield stripe. 3.20 remaining here in the second quarter. And Cornell certainly would like to get more points before the end of the first half. Trip receivers this time to the right. Hood throws. He has a receiver wide open and just missed the tight end, Mark Dittman. He was open. That could have been six. The throw has six. Dittman, a big tight end, 6'5", 245. You don't see the tight end running that type of pattern that often. Brings up a second down and 10. Cornell at their own 49-yard line. Snap again. Now Hood's in trouble and he's mugged. He is crushed by the line of scrimmage. Tim Green. Also, it looked like Jim Salters might have been in on the play. And certainly Mark Whaling. Well, that's a big play for the Princeton defense. They lost 10 on the play. And now it becomes a third and 19 for Cornell with 2.20 remaining. And Mike Hood, uh, he had a little trouble with that snap, and before he even had time to recover, Tim Green was all over him. Hood 
Wood looks to run, and he's bottled up. Another good play for the Princeton defense. Tim Green again. He broke through three there, and it was he and Hood had no chance. He saw Green right there, and he just figured he'd take his losses right there. Had nothing, nowhere to go. Princeton defense did a good job of, of stalling that drive right at midfield. A word about Tim Green. He's a first-team All-Ivy selection. He was the team's most valuable player last year. Led the Tigers with 107 tackles. He's an outstanding linebacker. Charles Watson is in punt formation. Damani Leach stands back at his 25. There's a minute 30 remaining. Cornell trying to take as much time as they can. They don't want to give Princeton a lot of time to work with. Good kick, and Leach calls for the fair catch. Again, almost mishandles the ball at the 22. So Princeton will put it in play there. We're a minute, a minute 22 remaining. Let's see what Cornell, excuse me, what Princeton does in this situation. Well, they got a lot of time. They have two timeouts left here. Uh, any any kind of score here is, is big for Princeton. It is Cornell seven and Princeton three. It's been an entertaining first half, not a lot of points. Teams have had opportunities, but both teams have not really been able to cash in all that much. Cornell got their touchdown on a deflection. Princeton kicked the field goal after a long kickoff return. Now, Kelney delivers incomplete. There was double coverage down the sideline. And really, Mike Clifford the fullback was not open on the play. Clifford is a good receiving fullback. He had 20 receptions a year ago. So McCallany will look for him throughout the season, but that time not available. A minute 15 remaining. It is seven to three Cornell. Tigers come up with a second down and 10. And receivers are split left and right. Handoff goes off tackle. And not much there as the Big Red bottles it up nicely. Damian Taylor carried the football. And Hansen in on the tackle for Cornell. And now Cornell calls a timeout. So Jim Hoffer thinking, hey, we got three timeouts left. There's a minute eight left. Let's get the ball back. Let's see what we can do. Basically making Princeton make a play here. Um, it's, it's, third, it's third and eight now. Uh, print, you know, whatever Princeton runs here, you still have another two timeouts after Cornell uh, to play with here. And they're going to look at it the same way Princeton uh, may have when they were coming out to start the series. Let's get some more points on the board before halftime. Well, Princeton has a third down and about eight coming up at the 26-yard line. As you mentioned, Tim, if Princeton has to punt, Cornell figures to get pretty decent field position, and with two timeouts left, they can move the ball down for field goal for a field goal opportunity. Seven to three, Cornell on top. Twin receivers go to the left. And Harry McKelney, the Princeton QB, looks to set things up. He is straight back to throw. Now he's in trouble. He runs out of there and runs right up the middle and gets back to the line of scrimmage. And Cornell probably will take another timeout. Let's see. They actually yes, they have. Did. Yes, they did. So with 59 seconds remaining in the half, the Big Red stops the clock. They'll force Princeton to punt. That Cornell figures to get excellent field position. They could, Tigers could use another good punt here by Matt Evans. He boomed one last time. They could use another one of those on this occasion. And Matt Evans drops back in punt formation. And the deep, deep receiver for Cornell is Chris Allen. He stands at 38. It's a low snap this time, and an end-over-end -end kick that is a short kick, a very short kick by Evans. And Cornell has tremendous field position at the 44-yard line of Princeton. 
first period, March at 7, Pennsylvania nothing. Well, that's not exactly what the Tigers were looking for in that situation. I mean, Cornell was probably 20 yards away from a decent field goal opportunity. And they have lots of time, 50 seconds remaining with one timeout left. Scott Carroll is the senior quarterback. He's back to throw. He fires. It's incomplete. Had a receiver open at the 30-yard line. Intended for Moresco. Jerry Wilson on the coverage. Wilson's a sophomore out of Piscataway. Played his high school football for the Chiefs of Piscataway High School. Brings up a second down and 10 at the 45. Actually, let's mark it at the 44. With 46 seconds remaining. Now a whistle. We have not had many whistles in this game. Princeton calls a timeout. In fact, I'm trying to think. We might have had maybe one penalty in this first half. Not many flags. Uh, very early, uh, Damani Leach was called for that late hit. Uh, and that's it. For a first game of the season, that is outstanding. Two well-coached teams here. So a big play coming up here for Cornell, and Princeton recognizes that. And the Tigers defensively, they want to talk it over, make sure that they have their defense set and know what to look for as Cornell sets up. Scott Carroll, the senior quarterback, comes back in. As the wind picks up, and it is a cold wind. Coming right through us here. We're on the roof here, so. It is literally, <laughs> no, literally, folks, this wind is blowing right <laughs> through us. <laughs> I can feel it passing through my body. Second down and 10 at the 44. And a long throw by Carroll. It is incomplete. One on one coverage. Tommy Ludwig was step for step with Eric Crossing. Good job by the Princeton secondary that time. There was not a man open. Well, third down and 10. Now Cornell, they don't get a first down. Princeton will get the football back. It is <laughs> Air Cornell this year. They are throwing the football. <laughs> Scott Carroll back to throw. Fires over the middle, wide open. It's Keeson Ball. He's inside the 20 and down to the 15. Wide open. Princeton had a pretty big blitz. They weren't able to get the Carroll in time, and then once again, the middle was wide open for Cornell. Beasonville had no one around them. Tim Cornell's in great shape now, with one timeout left and 31 seconds left. Carroll looks to throw. He sets. He fires. End zone. Incomplete. Intended for Krozik, who ran the out pattern in the corner. And it will be second down and 10. Ball at the 14-yard line. 21 seconds remaining, first half. Princeton with their backs up against the wall. They don't want Cornell to get a touchdown here. 14-3 and a half would not be exactly what the Tigers had in mind. They want to hold Cornell to a field goal attempt here. looks to throw. Now he gets out of trouble. He fires and we're going to have a, a penalty. We got two penalty flags. One is in the backfield, which is going to be holding against Cornell. And you have another flag down at the line of scrimmage, uh, down at the goal line. Uh, it looked like the official threw it in the vicinity of where Damani Leach was standing. So we'll have to see what the officials say here. You could have offsetting penalties. Or just when Which, you yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, look. Which in a way, would, well, here's the penalties. Holding against Cornell and holding against Princeton. Now with the offsetting penalties, if you think about it, that helps Princeton because that knocked a few seconds off the clock. The officials are talking about it. They should just nullify each other, I believe. <laughs> and replay the down. And indeed, it'll be second down again. Second down and 10 at the 14-yard line with 16 seconds left. 
trip receivers come to the right side. Scott Carroll, Cornell quarterback, looks over the D. High snap, he's straight back to throw. Swings it out, and Kiesendahl makes the catch. And then runs out of bounds inside the 12 yard line. A short pickup, it brings up a third down with 10 seconds left in the first half. Cornell looks to take one shot perhaps to get the touchdown. And then you might wonder if they will try to kick a field goal or at least get some points. to throw. He's hit. Fires. Touchdown. Cornell. Mark Dittman, the tight end on the pitch. What a throw by Carroll, who was destroyed after he let the ball go. David Ferrara just a little, little late getting to him. Well, once again, the middle of the uh, field wide open for another Cornell receiver. This time it's for a touchdown. Boy, that's got to be the it up. The kick is good. Five seconds left. doesn't get off a good punt, puts Cornell in business, and then they're able to go down and score right before halftime. 14 to three. Cornell, big red, right now looking good. With five seconds left, first half. Now I would imagine that Zombeck doesn't want to give anything for Damani Leach to run back here with five seconds left. Probably just kick a low line or somewhere around the 30. Yeah, that's what he does. Comes to an up man at the 20 yard line. Oh, oh, what a hit downfield. Frank Giglio of Cornell. Look at him. He's fired up. Oh, boy, that was. Oh, oh. Frank Giglio is the correct pronunciation. <laughs> That that was that was a good one. That, that, he he got he got Bruce Herb right in the chops. I gotta tell you, we are high up on the uh, top of the press box, high up top Sholkoff Field. We heard that hit up here. Well, Princeton comes out one second. I mean, McKelney, I'm sure, is going to take a knee. Uh, by the set, yeah, it certainly looks that way. With his team trailing 14 to three, and that'll do it. the campus of Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Lou Brogno along with Tim Kafer, Princeton and Cornell. Glad you could join us for our continuing coverage of Princeton Tigers football on C-Tech Cable Systems. Cornell receives the opening kickoff of the second half. Remember, Princeton won the coin toss at the beginning of the game, but deferred. They elected to kick instead of receive. So Cornell does receive to begin the second half. It's Cornell 14 and Princeton 3. A very good first half for Cornell. Princeton only gained 84 yards of total offense in the first half compared to 235 for Cornell. But interesting for Cornell, Tim, most of that yards came passing. 188 yards passing for the Big Red and only 47 on the ground. First down 10, Big Red. Mike Hood, he's hit, fumble, ball is loose at the 20-yard line. It looks like Hood might have fallen on top.
top of the ball. So Princeton comes out hitting hard on the first defensive series. David Ferrar again, he's the one guy on the defensive line for Princeton that has, has been getting a lot of pressure on the Cornell quarterbacks. And there he is again, causing a fumble. Uh, who did a good job of recovering that fumble? Huge loss, a loss of 10 on the play. Second down, 20 Cornell. The Big Red at their own 20 yard line. Receivers split left and right. Hood looks to throw. He fires, it complete, dropped in and out of the hands of J.B. Moresco. And so now you have a third and 20 coming up for Cornell. Mike Hood starts at quarterback. He started the game as the Cornell signal caller. But they did rotate quarterbacks in the first half. Mike Hood and Scott Carroll both seeing plenty of action, alternating series. And the rain coming down much harder now in Ithaca. It is a nasty, cold, rainy, windy day in upstate New York. Hood looks to throw. He fires out in the flat, caught by Tyson Gall, and he is creamed near the 24-yard line. Tim Green over on the tackle. A very good defensive series for the Tigers. That's what the Tigers need. They come out here in the second half, stop them on three plays. David Ferrara set the tone with the first play with a big sack. Uh, and uh, Cornell couldn't do too much with the next two plays. Now they're going to get the ball back here. Going with the win in the third quarter. That's maybe what Princeton deferred to the, to the, to the, to the direction rather than, than the ball here for the third quarter. Charles Watson in punt formation. Damani Lynch is deep for Princeton. Princeton figures to get good field positions. Blocked! Blocked by the Tigers and picked up by one of the Princeton players is Chuck Hastings, number 50. I didn't see who got in for the block. It looked like Rocky Fatizzi, Rocky Fatizzi, number 30, a junior, back up corner. A huge play for the Tigers, and that's exactly what they needed to get back in the game. Now they'll have a first down and goal at the Cornell 9. Coach Tosh has couldn't ask for a better start to the second half. Now they're here starting inside the 10 here, first and goal. Receiver splits out Philip Wendler, but they do keep it on the ground, the Tigers. A handoff goes up the middle. A short pickup as Cornell plays it well defensively. Tackle by Alvarez. Damian Taylor on the carry. It's second down and goal at the eight-yard line. The imperative on this series for Princeton. They need a touchdown. Rain really coming down now, and you can begin to see the rain on the artificial turf. It's beginning to build now. McKelney fakes the handoff. Now he looks to throw. Fires end zone incomplete. Never had a chance on that one. That was intended for Ray Canole, junior wide receiver. Well, this becomes a very big play now. Third down and goal at the eight. Princeton doesn't want to settle for three after that blocked field goal. They got to be thinking six here. They really need six here. Six, six here is, is pretty important to, to, to get them right back in this game. Third down goal. Mike Clifford, the one set back behind McKelney. McKelney rolls out right side. Now he'll throw. End zone. It is caught. What a catch. A tremendous catch in traffic. Ray Canole's first career touchdown reception. That is a great catch by Ray Canole. If you take into consideration, the ball is about a foot behind him. The ball's wet. He comes back around and gets the ball. And that's a huge touchdown for the Tigers. This gets him right back in the game here. It's 14 to 9. What a catch by Canole. And McKelney threw a bullet in there. Alex Sook is in to attempt the extra point. What a great sequence of events for Princeton. They're right back in the game. 
snap is good. The kick is up. It is good. 12-20 remaining here in this third quarter. It is Cornell 14 and Princeton 10. Glad you could join us for our coverage of Princeton Tigers football. This is the first game of the 1997 season, and we'll have many other games for you along the way. Of course, we'll bring you Brown, the Brown game from Providence, Princeton Colgate, Princeton Harvard, which figures to be a big game this year, Columbia on the schedule, and Dartmouth as well. And Princeton will now kick off to Cornell, Greg Nortman will tee it up at the 35 yard line and it is now a driving rain here in Cornell. Well, I can't say we're not used to this. It seems like the last two years, whenever the Tigers play, the weather takes a turn for the worst. So Princeton should feel right at home with this weather. I know we do. Yes, <laughs> here is a high kick that comes to Allen at the 10 yard line. He's to the 20 and he breaks a tackle and gets across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Chris Allen on the return. Well, let's see how Cornell responds now. They still lead it by the score of 14 to 10. And interesting that Mike Hood comes out of quarterback. This will be two series in a row. There's a look at the rain glistening off of the artificial turf here at Shulcock Field. The lights, of course, are on. If they weren't, I'll tell you, it'd be tough to see down there. Hood hands off up the middle, and Justin Bush is hit at the line of scrimmage and driven down. Tim Green and Jamie Toddings on the tackle. I'm going to see where the conditions, whether Cornell wants to change their strategy here a little bit. It'll be a little tough to be sending four receivers at every play and running that shotgun with the, with the, the I mean, just impossible conditions now. The Princeton defense has come out with extra fire here in the second half. This looks like a different defensive football team. Second down and call it about seven. And Hood throws outside incomplete. It's going to become extremely difficult to catch the football now. It was just like I was saying earlier, that, 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 that play was just off. It looked funny from the get-go. Mark Dittman, the tight end, had his hands on the ball, but again, very actually, tough. And actually, Lou, he was fortunate to, to drop that ball. That would have probably been no gain or, or maybe even a loss on that play if he does catch the ball. The water is just sitting on top of the turf. <laughs> you gotta be, when you run, I'm sure you're hydroplaning. Trip receivers go to the left, Hood back to throw, whistles, and a flag. It looked like one of the wide receivers might have moved early. We'll see. And indeed, it is illegal procedure against Cornell. That'll back them up five. That's a big five and in this kind of condition. So they mark the ball back at the 20 six yard line it now becomes a third down and 12 at the 26. Yeah I'm looking at the screen this kind of reminds me of Monday night game years ago in New <laughs> England when the uh, Joe Washington that big game for the Baltimore Colts. <laughs> what a memory. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do well in school as a young younger guy. <laughs> Here's the give no nope. put fakes the handoff throws it's incomplete sliding and trying to make the catch was Moresco. It would have been enough for the first down, but. That ball rolled out. Gary Wilson almost had an interception. It almost went right into his hands. And the rain just sheets of rain coming down now. Another three and out for the Princeton D. Charles Watson in punt formation. Damani Leach is back deep at the 40 yard line. 14-10, Cornell leads with 11-20 remaining, third quarter. Good snap. Kick is a wobbly kick that Leach calls for a fair catch. 
and makes the catch at the 43-yard line. So Princeton will put it in play there offensively. Very good field position. Well, Princeton, with their first road game of what will be a road season this year, Palmer Stadium, of course, has been torn down to make way for a new stadium on the campus. And Princeton will travel 3,200 miles this season. And they're hoping for a lot of wins on this road trip. McKelney fires out, catch made. That's a first down for the Tigers into Cornell territory at the 43. Looks like Ryan Crowley on the catch. Crowley, a junior out of Norfolk, Nebraska. Now the weather here doesn't seem to affect the Princeton offense as no. much as it has the Cornell offense. Princeton comes up. First down, 10 for the Tigers. Now, whistle. And there might have been movement in the Princeton offensive line. First half was relatively penalty free. Very few flags thrown. And the ball marked back to the 48 yard line. It'll be first and 15 for Princeton. 10 and a half remaining in the third. It's 14 10 Cornell. Eye formation for the Tigers. Now they jump out of the eye. McKelney straight back to throw. He dumps it out, and the pass is caught. And getting back to the original line of scrimmage is Jerry Gerardo. So they pick up the five they lost from the penalty. It takes extra concentration now to catch that football in this kind of weather. Yes, it does, Louie. I was just saying, it doesn't seem to affect Princeton too much. In fact, their offense looks a little more sharp in the second half here. Uh, and considering the uh, considering the conditions, that's pretty good. Cornell has just had a lot of trouble. Last week. They've run six plays and really have done nothing with those plays. Bruce Herb is the fullback. He jumps out of the eye. And the he looks to throw. Now he's going to run. And he takes quite a shot. He's nailed it at about the 44-yard line. And he gets back close to the line of scrimmage. Nobody opened downfield. He was looking to go. It looked like he was looking to go deep there. I mean, he just didn't have anything and, and, and ate the ball here. And now it becomes a third down and 11 for Princeton. Still some hardy fans holding on, but there are there are some people who actually have left the stadium. <laughs> and you can't blame them. McKelney back to throw, out of the shotgun. Now he runs out of there, reverses his field, and he takes down the referee and is nailed. I don't think they'll call that a fumble. Let's see. They do. Fumble. I don't know. They're talking about it now. Uh, I don't know about that be... one, though. Know, we don't want to sound like homers here. Yeah, I know. But that, <laughs> I think that would be a bad call. I mean, he was clearly at the, down. At the risk of sounding like a homer, yeah, it looked like it looked like that play was over. Fourth it, down. Okay, they made a good call there. Yeah, that's the proper call. Fourth down. And Princeton will punt. <laughs> Matt Evans into punt. Good snap. End over end kick that bounces at the 10 and just bounces right in to the end zone. Hit a puddle down at the 10 yard line and took off like yeah. you're skipping uh, stones across a lake. Yeah, that, that slid in. So Cornell gets the football back, leading 14 to 10 with eight minutes and eight seconds remaining in the third quarter.
Scott Carroll now comes in at quarterback for Cornell. The senior, 6'4", 201. Out of the shotgun, fakes left, now runs right. Still looking, dumps it off, catch made. And he dumps it to his big tight end, backup tight end, John Kelly, senior out of Addison, Illinois. They pick up a couple. Dan Swingos was the man who forced the play out of bounds. And the ball sits at the 29. Looks like the rain may have let up just a little. The wind definitely has. Unfortunately, on the field, the damage is done. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> not, not a lot of drainage <laughs> on that artificial turf. Whoa, all kinds of movement on the line of scrimmage. Flags fly. Looks like Jim Boyle for Cornell on the inside uh, interior line move. Cornell's offensive line is an interesting situation. Twin brothers at the tackles, Christian DePaula and Matthew DePaula, and they were both national power lifters in high school. So not only are they twin brothers, they are strong twin brothers. <laughs> 6'2", 262, and 6'2", 257. That pass, low. Incomplete. Tim Green just ruined that play. He came in, he came in untouched and, and was able to lower the boom on uh, Scott Carroll there. Third down and about six coming up for Cornell at the 24-yard line. 7.54 left in the third, and Cornell leads it 14 to 10. Opening game of the 97 season. Carroll calls the signals. He has tripped receivers left side. Almost lost the handle on the snap. Throws over the middle, incomplete. And that time, Princeton was able to get in there. Looked like Griff King got in there and got a paw on Carroll. That caused him to throw the errant pass. Defensive lines played a lot better in the second half and able to get a lot more pressure on the Cornell quarterbacks. And there again, uh, Griff King in there, David Farrar had a good push in on the uh, on the quarterback. And there, here we go again, where Cornell didn't doing too much on offense and Princeton gets the ball back here and probably in pretty good field position. Charles Watson in punt formation. Princeton coming again, but Watson gets it away. Leach will let it bounce at the 40 and that's the wise move. The question is, did it touch a Princeton player? No, I guess not. I don't think so. That was close. Wow, though. that was close. And that ball lands. Get away from the ball. <laughs> well, Jerry Wilson came down on the, the pump team coverage, and he almost ran into the ball. I don't think he ever saw until the last second. He was able just to get out of the way. Princeton will put the football in play at the 41-yard line. Tigers come out on offense, trailing 14 to 10, with seven and a half remaining here in this third quarter. McKelney flips to Taylor. He will not get much. He's hemmed in and brought down. Dave Ahouse was the first man to make the tackle, and then John Hansen came in to help out. I'm saying those names an awful lot today, Lou. Yeah, Cornell's linebackers very active. Hanson, as we mentioned last year, 154 tackles. And Dave Ahas also had a very good season, especially against Princeton. Seven minutes left, third quarter. 14-10 Tigers. Out of the eye, excuse me, out of the shotgun formation. McKelney looks over the Cornell defense. He's back to throw. Fires. It is incomplete. Intended for Gerardo, who made a diving catch near the 50-yard line. And now it brings up a third down. Justin Bird on the coverage for Cornell on that last sequence. Third down at about eight, and the ball is at the 44-yard line.
trip for receivers left side. McKelney's looking that way. He gets it out there incomplete. Behind Gerardo, he didn't have a chance. And Princeton has to punt. Six forty-nine left in the third. Still fourteen ten. Four down. Good snap. Almost blocked. This could be roughing the kicker. It is. Princeton's going to get an automatic first down on the roughing the kicker call. Cornell is saying they were blocked into the kick. Well, we'll see if it's a running into or a personal foul. Personal foul would be big here. And that's what it is. Well, Tom Nunes, number 21, is claiming he was blocked into the kicker. But he's not going to get the call. It'll be a roughing the kicker call, and Princeton gets a huge break. The Tigers will get a first down in Cornell territory down at the 42-yard line. Actually, they'll bring it all the way down to the Cornell 41. Well, let's see if the Tiger offense can take advantage of this. This is a big play for them. Uh... Tigers come back on the O with 6.41 left in the third quarter, and they trail 14 to 10. McKelney, play action, fakes the handoff, now delivers, incomplete. Off of the hands of Philip Wendler. Junior wide receiver will bring up a second down and ten. It's a nice looking play by the Tigers there. He had a guy, he had a guy wide open and just uh, over overshot him there. Well, it's got to be tough. McKelney has that rifle arm, you know, and he threw that that fastball, and that's got to be tough to catch on a day like today. <laughs> tough to catch on a on a nice day. <laughs> second down, ten Tigers at the Big Red, 41. The Kelney straight back to throw this time. He's looking. Now he goes out to Gerardo, makes the catch at the 40, 35, and knocked out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. That should be a Princeton first down. Aaron Kelney had a lot of time on that play. He was looking around, and actually, he had enough time to pump, look for Gerardo, let him clear a little bit, and, was, and we had a lot of room over there to run. The Kelney did a great job just just waiting to see what happened, and then the offensive line gave him a lot of time to, to be patient like that. Ball delivered down to the 29, and that's where the Tigers have a first down and 10. Less than six and a half left in the third period, and Princeton on a drive, trailing by four. Now a flag. And the call will go against Princeton. Oh, no. False start against the Tigers. And that backs them up five. So instead of first and 10, now first and 15. Didn't see that. That must have been a, must have been a very, <laughs> very slight movement in the offensive line. Offensive line of Justin Bennett, Amin Abdullah, Marsik. Herdman and Grafey. From the 34, Nakelny, play action, dumps it out, incomplete. He was hit hard as he let the ball go. Joe Norris, the defensive end, came in and slammed Nakelny to the turf. Brad wanted a penalty there, but that was that was definitely in the area of, uh, of Gerardo on that play. That was, Good play by McKelly to get rid of the ball, not take the loss. Now second down and 15 at the 34. Twin receivers come out right side for Princeton. Back to throw. He fires, and it is incomplete. Intended for Crowley, and he got tied up with the free safety, Chris Allen. No 
flag thrown on the play. Crowley was looking. Crowley was looking around for it. It looked like he may have been pushed on that as the ball was getting near him, but referees didn't think so on that on that play. So now it's 6:15 remaining in the third period. It becomes a third and 15 for the Tigers. Twin receivers go right. McKelney looks to throw. Over the middle, has a receiver and it's dropped. Gerardo had the ball at the 24, but he could not hang on. And Princeton will probably have to punt. Matt Evans will kick. And back deep is Chris Allen. It's partially blocked, deflected at the line of scrimmage. It does take a good Princeton roll. It will roll dead at the 11-yard line, and that's where Cornell will put it in place. This telecast of Princeton University football is sponsored by McCaffrey's Supermarkets. McCaffrey's in the business of satisfying customers. In fact, McCaffrey's guarantees the highest quality in everything they offer. Market fresh fruits and vegetables, oven fresh baked breads, pastries, cakes, and gourmet prepared meals ready to heat and eat. McCaffrey's a supermarket experience in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania. Cornell, first down 10. Give is off tackle. A pickup of maybe a yard or so. Terry Smith, backup tailback, carries for the Big Red. You know, that punt, Dave Ahouse was able to get a hand on it, but actually it was kind of fortunate for Princeton. That may have been their most effective punt of the game. It put, him, uh, it put the Cornell Big Red right around the 10-yard line. That's kind of, I think, what Matt Evans would have wanted to do anyway. That's probably... Well, Cornell has a second and nine now. At the 13, long throw downfield, and it was nearly picked off, overthrown. And Damani Leach had a beat on it. That's a dangerous pass. It was intended for Pat Dutton. Now a third down and nine for Cornell. This is a big play because if they don't pick up the first down, the Big Red will be punting from the shadow of their own end zone. Princeton showing blitz. They're coming. The long throw downfield is incomplete by Carroll. Indeed, will have to punt. Damani Leach will be the deep receiver, and Charles Watson will kick it away for Cornell. Five minutes, ten seconds left in the third. It's Cornell 14 and Princeton 10. is at the 40 and across the 45, drops dead at the 46. And Princeton in Cornell territory is a penalty flag, by the way. Penalty on the field, a flag on the field, more appropriately, at the 22-yard line. The call is personal foul against Cornell. They may tack this on to the end of the punt, and Princeton is going to be in great shape here. I'm not sure what happened there. I saw Tom Ludwig getting up and having a few words with the uh, Cornell punter, Watson. And I don't know if it was something between those two guys or not, but regardless, that's a big, big penalty there. All the way down to the 31-yard line. It's a 15-yard personal foul against the Big Red. Princeton has a first and 10 at the Cornell 31. Golden opportunity for the Tigers. 
twin receivers to the left side. The tight end, Jason Glotzbeck, goes in motion. McKelney gives the ball to Taylor up the middle. Damian Taylor almost broke it as he clashes across the 20-yard line. Offensive line doing a heck of a job there. It was wide open for Taylor. A couple more plays like that, maybe we can open this thing up a little bit for the, uh, for the Tigers' offense. Now Princeton with a second and about two. I'll call it three, second and three at the 24. Under four and a half left in the third quarter. Out of the eye, the Tigers will run this one. McKelney fires, incomplete. Intended for Crowley, who was running the out pattern, but that pass a little too far outside. So it brings up a key third down and three. From this spot on the field, it would be a 41-yard field goal in the rain. That might be a little tough on a day like today. Third and three, and the fullback, Erd, does not get the first down. He is hit and dragged down at the line of scrimmage. And we're looking at a fourth and maybe you know, a little over a yard, I guess. Look. This position of the field looks like Coach Hash is going to go for it here. Fourth and two at the 22. pick up on a quarterback sneak. They needed almost a full two yards. And he didn't make it. And Cornell has held. That's a, that's a tough amount of yardage to pick up on a quarterback sneak, fourth and two. had the ball at the 31 yard line and they gave it up in downs. Let's see if that lifts Cornell. They lead 14-10. Big Red in business. For the first and 10 at the 22. This is Mike Hood. He's in trouble. And delivers catch made at the 30 yard line. Mike Dittman, the tight end. Second down and about two for Cornell at the 31. Give is up the middle, a huge hole for Kiesendahl. And you could have drove a truck through that hole. That's a first down for Cornell. There was a penalty marker on the play. Princeton was offside, and Cornell, of course, will refuse. Well, that last sequence where Princeton did not make the first down might, might have changed the momentum of this game. It seemed to be going in Princeton's favor up to that point. Twin receivers left side. Hood back to throw. He has all day. It's incomplete. He had all day to throw. No pressure whatsoever. Intended for Eric Krosick, who could not make the catch at the 45. And he was wide open. Kristen very fortunate there that he did drop the ball. Two minutes and 25 seconds left in the third quarter. It is still 14 to 10. Cornell on top. Second and 10 at the 42-yard line. Mike Hood, the junior quarterback for the Big Red. Again, he'll throw. 
And they set up a screen, and it was read beautifully by the Tigers. Very well defended. They tried to get it to Kiesendahl, but Princeton was all over that one. Kiesendahl, Kiesendahl dropped that ball, but if, if he caught it, that would have been a, at least a five-yard loss on that play. So Cornell comes up, and now we're faced with a third and ten here. Princeton, it looked like all three Princeton linebackers were all over that, that, that screen play out. Ball marked at the 43. Third and 10. Movement. But now Hood will run the other way. He fires. Caught. First down, Cornell. Eric Krosik makes the catch across the 45-yard line. And that was a very nice play for the Big Red. Yeah, Princeton sent uh, Brent Marshall, and they also sent in, uh, Tim Green on that. Cornell did a good job of... Uh, of blocking that blitz and that left a lot of time for, for Hood to find his receiver and then big first down for Cornell. Hand off goes up the middle to Smith. He breaks into the secondary. He's down near the Princeton 30 yard line. minute 47 remaining in the third period. Cornell has regained the momentum. Big Red has a first down and 10 at the Princeton 31. Hand off up the middle to Smith and Cornell Obviously feels they have found a sweet spot in the Princeton defense. Run the ball well, first time, first time in the whole game they've run the ball real well. But with with the rain and the wet conditions here, they they kind of had to scrap that uh, shotgun and and running gun stuff they were doing in the first basically the first half and most of the third quarter. Second down, six Cornell at the 27-yard line. Mike Hood in the shotgun formation where the receiver split left and right. Now he's straight back to throw. Fires over the middle, and that'll be interference. Called against Damani Leach. He got there early, hit Eric Crossick at the 15. Yeah, not too much question about that one. So that penalty will give Cornell a first down. First down at the 15-yard line. Cornell has put together a very nice drive after the goal, after the fourth down stand in their own territory against the Tigers. Handoff goes to Justin Bush. He's inside the 15, down to about the 13-yard line. We're inside a minute, remaining third period. Cornell 14, Princeton 10. Cornell trying to defeat Princeton for the second time in a row. Back to throw his hood. He looks end zone. shoulder pads. Uh, that's a second one like that for, <laughs> for Cornell on this drive. It couldn't be any more wide open than that. I guess he had too much time to think about what he was going to do with it when he caught it. I don't know. Hood audibleizing, looking to change the play at the line of scrimmage. A third down and seven at the 13. He's straight back to throw. He's hit as he let it go. And 
but it is incomplete. Jamie Toddings came in on a blitz, and now there's a flag on the play. Offside Princeton, that hurts. And it was Jamie Toddings who was offside. Jumped just a, a hair too quick, but he was definitely offside on that. So Cornell has another life with four seconds remaining here in this third period. On the offside play, it brings the ball inside the 10 to the nine yard line. It is third down and three. Terry Smith gets the carry. He's hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got it up for the first down. No, not when we were marking it. Official linesman standing at the seven. He would have been needed to get to the six. And that'll do it. That's the end of the third quarter in Ithaca. The score after fourth down as we begin the fourth quarter for Cornell. Fourth and one. At the seven, give up the middle and it's very close. It depends on where they mark it. Brad Kiesendahl carried the football. Princeton says no. Obviously, Cornell says yes. And they'll have to bring out the sticks to measure for this one for sure. A huge play in the game. The first play of the fourth quarter. And this is going to be real close, Lou. Lou Brogno along with Tim Kafer. Glad you could join us here. At Sholkoff Field, the first game of the 1997 season, Princeton and Cornell. Cornell leading 14 to 10. And as they stretch the stick, it is not a first down. Princeton is held. The Tiger defense comes up big on a fourth down and one at the six yard line. Inside the 20, Princeton has been tough. This is the third time they've stopped them inside the 20. A huge play. Now, one interesting stat when we have to have to relay this stat. Princeton has been outscored 28 nothing in the fourth quarter the last two years that they have played Cornell. It's been all Cornell in fourth quarters the last two games. Princeton will have to turn that around here if they want to win this football game. McKelney out of the eye, the flip to Taylor. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and he is dropped. He got very little yardage out of that one. John Hansen was the first man over. And also number 98, Jeff Eland, the senior defensive end. One yard pickup, second down nine. Princeton at the seventh. Well, the rain has stopped. The wind still blows. Cold wind here at Cornell. McKelney gets away momentarily and did a great job to get back over the five. They almost had him in the end zone. They look like a sure safety. Rich Searin looked like he had him without a problem. McKelney was able to get away and do a good job. He actually got back just shot. It looks like just right at the original line of scrimmage. Third and 10, Princeton at the six yard line. Cornell leads it 14 to 10. McKelney out of the shotgun, but now whistles and flags. Probably some kind of movement on Princeton. Let's see what the call is. It is illegal procedure against the Tigers, and that will drive them back. That'll take them back to the three-yard line, half the distance. Princeton needs to at least get some room. If they can't get the first down, they, gotta, they have to get enough room to give their punter, Matt Evans, some, some room in the end zone to kick the ball out of there. in motion. 
McKelney dumps it out, but it's dropped. Dropped at the five-yard line by Damian Taylor. So now Evans has to punt from the back of his own end zone. And Chris Allen is back deep at the 40-yard line. Line drive, kick, bounces at the 30, 35. Allen picks it up at the 35, weaves his way in, breaks the tackle, and is inside the 25-yard line. Cornell has brilliant field position. With 12.49 left in the game, the Big Red in good shape. 14-10 Cornell. Now, once again, the Princeton defense in a tough situation here. Cornell gets the ball just inside the 25-yard line of Princeton. Krawczyk comes wide to the right. And the quarterback is Scott Carroll. He looks to throw. He fires. It's nearly intercepted on the far sideline. Very dangerous pass. Almost picked by Ryan Demler, a sophomore backup free safety. Almost a big play by Demler. That was a very good play by him reading that play. That could have been six going the other way for Princeton. Now it is second down 10 Cornell at the Princeton 24. Carroll delivers incomplete off of the hands of Krosick. And now it brings up a third down and 10. Tim Green getting good pressure there on Carroll. It will knock him down. Scott Carroll, the senior in the quarterback rotation for Cornell. Good look at him in the shotgun. He's straight back to throw. Princeton with pressure, and he's hit as he lets it go. to be called against Tommy Ludwig, but the call is not made. Meanwhile, Carroll hammered as he let that go. Jamie Toddins uh, came in, nobody touched him. He, he got to him just as he uh, let the ball go and kind of threw a floater up there. It didn't look like anybody really knew where that ball was coming from by downfield. Cornell will go for it on fourth down and 10 at the Princeton 24-yard line. They deliver, and that is not nearly enough for the first down. A short pass to Pat Dutton. Tommy Ludwig again. Princeton linebackers in, the, uh, in their secondary have played very well today. In fact, the whole Princeton defense has. They've really kept them in this game. So now Princeton comes up on offense at the 22. A lot of time left in this game. 12 minutes and 28 seconds left. McKelney straight back to throw. On first down and 10, he dumps it out to the fullback, Bruce Erb. He breaks a couple of tackles and burrows his way ahead for maybe a yard. Again, Cornell leading the play very well. Jorge Alvarez over there, the outside linebacker. It brings up a second and eight. We feel that wind. I'll tell you, that's like a winter wind. It's, it's cold up here in Ithaca. <laughs> Figure we get an easy couple games weather-wise. I mean, you got to be kidding me here. <laughs> Middle of September. Here is Nikelny looking to throw. He gets away from the pressure, delivers to Irv outside at the 30, and he's brought down across the 35, but that's a Princeton first down. Irv 
Cobb was wide open. It looked like Cornell defense kind of lost track of him there. McKelney looked around a little bit, and there, there was Herb all by himself. Bruce Herb, a sophomore out of Pequannock, New Jersey. First and 10 for the Tigers at the 35-yard line. 11 and a half remaining in the game. And Cornell leads it 14 to 10. McKelney fakes the handoff and is crushed. He turned around and was pummeled by Dave Ahouse. Untouched. McKelney never had a chance. He looked up and Ahouse was there right there. A loss of five on the play. Second and 15 for the Tigers at their own 30-yard line. They come up in the eye with twin receivers to the right side. McKelney rolls out, right side. Now he fires, and the receiver makes the catch. That is Ryan Crowley, actually a Ray Canole, excuse me, number 15. Coming up from Princeton here now. Third down and about 10 at the 35 yard line. Really need to keep this drive going. Not only just, you know, they need the points here, but going to give the defense a little bit of a break here. The defense has played well, but you need to give them a little bit of a break here at this point of the game. 10 minutes and 25 seconds left in the ball game. And the Kelly straight back to throw against the Blitz. He delivers incomplete. Intended for Canoli, but good coverage by Tom Nunes, the left corner for Cornell. So again, Princeton will punt. Matt Evans is into the game. And Cornell will get it back. different deep receiver this time for Cornell. It's Bush. It's a punt that rolls, a good Princeton roll, inside the 20 and dead at the 19-yard line. So Cornell will put it in play there. It's probably their worst field position of this second half. 14-10, Cornell. Cornell got off to a 7-0 lead on a deflected pass, which was caught in the end zone. And then Princeton came back, kicked the field goal, it was 7-3. Cornell made it 14-3 right at the end of the first half. And then Princeton came back after a good defensive stand in the early portions of the third quarter and scored their touchdown. It's 14-10. That pass incomplete. Mike Hood looking for Brad Kiesendahl. Up a second and ten. Yeah, Lou, I don't know if that ball slipped out of his hand or not. It looked kind of funny coming out of there. Well, the ball could be slick. Remember, it rained for a good portion of the game. And that artificial turf you could probably see on the camera shots is still extremely wet. Again, that's Delmar on the play. Ryan Delmar getting some quality playing time in the game and doing the job. Looks like the Princeton coaches have sort of uh, maybe put a little, a little bit of a spy on the quarterback. The quarterback draw really worked well for Cornell early, earlier in the game. Uh, that's, that's the second time they run that and really without too much success. Now a third down and about seven for Cornell. Princeton trying to get the ball back. The big red come up in the eye in the shotgun formation with trip receivers right side. This is Hood. He's looking, looking, still looking. Now delivers. It's intercepted. Let's see what the call is. Yes, it is. Picked off by the Tigers. Intercepted by Tom Ludwig. A 
a pass that Hood never should have thrown. He was heavily pressured, and Lundwig came up big. Yeah, that was, uh, they, they, he had a lot of time to, to do something with that ball, and that was probably the worst thing he could have done to him. He just threw that into a crowd of players. Tom Ludwig was the guy who came down with it. Once again, the Princeton defense is giving uh, giving the Tigers a chance to to take this game away from Cornell. Cornell has pretty much outplayed Princeton in uh, most most of this game, and here's here's Princeton deep in Cornell territory with a chance to go ahead. Damani Leach is in the game as a wide receiver for the Tigers, and they have a trick play. It's a reverse, double reverse, and Leach. And he was destroyed at the 40-yard line. Actually lost eight yards on the play. So it'll be second and 18 for Princeton. And the Cornell defense was all over that. They hit Damian Taylor and he went to hand at the leech. And it, it just seemed like there was, a, there, was a, there was a whole big red defense was on leech before he had a chance to get going. Keep in mind, Princeton's not thinking field goal here. They need a touchdown. They trail by four. McKelney hands it off. Good hole. Momentarily, Damian Taylor carries. And he's up to the 35, so he gets some of the yardage back, but it's going, to, it's going to bring up a third down and very long. Third down and 13 for Princeton. Under eight minutes left in the game, Cornell leads by four. Ball is just shy of the Cornell 35-yard line. send receivers split left and right and split backs behind McKelney. Harry McKelney back to throw. It's a blitz for Cornell. He gets away. He fires. It is incomplete. Intended for Philip Wendler. Pretty good pass actually by McKelney under the circumstances, but Princeton did not take advantage of the interception. And now they'll have to punt. They really need a punt they did, uh, here by Matt Evans to get get the big red deep in their territory. They really need to pin him down here. Matt Evans in punt formation, and Chris Allen is deep. He stands at the 10. Evans goes for the corner, and it's a pretty good kick. He gets it inside the 10-yard line. It bounces at about the 11. So Cornell will get the ball at the 11-yard line. Not a spectacular kick by Evans, but a pretty good one under the circumstances. And Cornell is pinned fairly deep in their territory. <clears throat> Excuse me, as I lose my voice. It's no wonder with this weather, right? <laughs> We should probably tell the folks that we are outside. We are not in a press box. Yeah, we're roughing it here. <laughs> we are outside in the elements, folks. First down 10 at the 11. Twin receivers go right side. Here's the give off tackle and nothing doing. Kiesendahl on the carry, but he picked up maybe a yard. Dan Swingos on the tackle. 6.55 and winding down here in the fourth quarter. 14 to 10, Cornell. A very important game for both teams. For the obvious reason, you don't want to start your Ivy League season 0-1. Here's Kiesendahl, nothing. Princeton flying in now defensively. Tim Green and Mark Whaling on the tackle. Some interesting scores around the Ivy League. Brown with 42 points against Yale and Harvard with 45 against Columbia. 
and Dartmouth whooping up on Penn. Carroll in trouble, lets it go, it's nearly intercepted. Again, an ill-advised pass for Cornell, and the another, Red will have to punt. Another ill-advised pass, and he's real lucky there. situation where time is not an ally anymore. They need to move down the field with a sense of urgency. Yeah, you get the feeling this is it right here. High formation for the Tigers at the 40. Harry McKelney calls the signals. Split receivers, McKelney looks to throw. He fires, Erb makes the catch at the 45 and dives across near the 50. A pickup of about eight. Now that's a good play by Prince, a nice safe play, get the ball rolling here, get something positive going here. Clock stops with 5.30 left in the game. They actually mark it as a nine yard pickup, so the ball's at the 49. Second and one. Ray Canole goes wide to the right, and Ryan Crowley comes wide left. McKelney with an I formation behind him. The deep back is Damian Taylor. Here is the gift to Taylor, and he goes up the middle, spins for the first down. That's a first down for Princeton in Cornell territory at the Big Red 48-yard line. It has been a good half for Princeton. Basically, the Tigers have outplayed the Big Red here in the second half, but they still trail by four. Split backfield this time for the Tigers as they come up in a shotgun formation. McKelney looks to throw. He fires, and the catch is made across the 40-yard line. Ray Canole on the reception, and he dives ahead inside the 40. He's close to another Princeton first down. And it is a first down for the Tigers. Inside five minutes left in the game. Receivers come out to the left side. Split backs behind McKelney. He gives it to Taylor up the middle. Damian Taylor with a good run as he busts across the 35 and down near the 33 yard line. Just seems when Princeton runs the ball right up the gut, that's where they're having most of their success. Damian Taylor, the sophomore out of Norfolk, Virginia. Again, missed a lot of last year at knee surgery. running well here today. Second down and four. Ball marked at the 32-yard line. McKelney straight back to throw. He has plenty of protection. He fires incomplete. Intended for his tight end, Jason Glotzbach. He was not open on the far sideline. Glotzbach is a junior out of Redlands, California. That's significant because Princeton has 16 players on their roster from California. Long way to come to school. But of course, these Ivy League schools have players from all over the nation. Those California players can't be enjoying the uh, weather today. <laughs> no, they're not liking this weather. No. <laughs> Third down and four. Key play. Here is McKelvin. He lets it fly. It is.
Bills against free safety Chris Allen and his pass interference. Lou, I don't know what took that flag so long. I, I was waiting. I, the one, the uh, one official that looked like he had the better look at the play did, uh, didn't call it. It was a, another uh, official from upfield. That seemed, that seemed like a pretty easy call. At least from up here, it looked pretty easy call to make. Princeton with a first down and 10 at the 17 yard line. Tiger's best opportunity here now in this second half. Here is the gift of Taylor up the middle. He's inside the 15 and dives down near the 14 yard line. A pickup of three, second down and seven. The clock ticks with 3.55 left in the game. Looked like Taylor was going to have a lot of room in that play. Hole closed up real quick. Cornell did a good job of closing that one down. And the Cornell fans begin their chant of defense. Their defense has played very well throughout the game, but now their backs are to the wall. Second down and seven. McKelney looks to throw. Now he'll run. Nobody open. Puts his head down and gets down near the 12-yard line. It'll bring up a third down. And about six. They mark the ball at the 13-yard line. Third and six points to remember. Field goal is no good, really, for the Tigers. They need to score a touchdown with 255 remaining. McKelney fakes the handoff. Play action. He's looking, looking, looking. And the catch is made. Ball is loose. And knocked out of bounds. The ball comes out of bounds. I don't know if they're going to call it an incomplete pass. It looks like they will. Incomplete is the call. Sure, uh, Crowley hit, hit him. Not only, not only did he hit him and keep him from the first down, but he actually knocked the ball away for incomplete pass. This telecast of Princeton University football is sponsored in part by McCaffrey's Supermarkets. McCaffrey's does catering for the best the season has to offer, or whatever the occasion. McCaffrey's has the answer. Tailgate parties, casual events, or formal affairs. Cattle McCaffrey's make it easier. McCaffrey's, the supermarket experience in Princeton, West Windsor, at Yardley, Pennsylvania. Wow, this could be the ball game. Fourth down and six. It's do or die for Princeton. Two minutes and 39 seconds left. And the Tigers need six yards for a first down. support for their defense. Surprised. They had four yards to get there. Um, it, 
and that play just looked like it just never had a chance. There was nobody open. Cornell defended it well, but I thought for sure they would just look for maybe a nice little screen pass, either Taylor or Clifford, get the first down, and then you know get the business from there and get it made, you know, put them in a position, at least probably a first and goal, and, and go from there. Give them four plays to get into the end zone rather than take it all in one shot. First down and 10 at their own 13-yard line. Two minutes and 32 seconds left in the game. Hood gives Brad Kiesendahl carries the football. Picks up a couple. And the clock ticks down to two minutes and 20 seconds left. Princeton does have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock if they so desire. the rain begins to fall again. Nasty day here in Ithaca, and it'll be even nastier for the Tigers if they can't come up with some points over the next two minutes. Timeout Cornell, Mike Hood, asks for the timeout. Well, you can't say Princeton hasn't made his chances. Tigers have had plenty of opportunities, but they have not been able to take advantage. That's been a difficult offensive showing for the Tigers. They have looked good at times, but not consistently. They just have not been able, been able to put the ball in the end zone on a consistent basis. Yeah, you get the feeling that this, that last drive may have been their good, you know, the best opportunity to get in. Now the defense, once again, is going to have to come up big for them and hopefully leave enough time for the Princeton offense to, to be able to get in the end zone. This much time left, to really, the Princeton defense would probably want to maybe start looking to, to maybe take some chances and get some turnovers. The rain's starting to come down again. Maybe pry something loose here, you know, you never know. Second down and three, and give up the middle to Kiesendahl. Both hands wrapped around the football, and he picks up a couple. Princeton calls a timeout with a minute 43 left. And the Tigers use one of their two timeouts. Now the Cornell, something interesting, the Cornell I guess students are down at one end of the end zone. And it looks like they're getting ready to storm the field when the game's over. Why, we, we really don't know. Well, they made an announcement, I, and I think because we've been coming here for a few years. On the, on the first home game, they let the Cornell freshmen ah. go to the South Side Stadium, then run onto the field. They have to, I don't know what they do once they run onto the field. <laughs> I think they just run across and they just run off to the north end. Of course, they ought to have extra fun today because it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> I can see a few hook slides yeah. by some of these freshmen. <laughs> a couple belly flops, maybe. All right, key play here, third down, five. Princeton hoping to get the ball back and stop Cornell here. And Hood on a naked bootleg turns the corner and he does not get the first down. He stopped. <laughs> now, you'd like to hear what that conversation was all about. Hood was tackled at the 20 by Griff King, but Hood continued to plow forward even after he was tackled. <laughs> I'm sure Griff King had a couple of things to say to Mike. <laughs> now you have a fourth down and two. Cornell will punt. A minute 33 left. Princeton has taken. I thought Princeton took its timeout there. It did. They did. Princeton took their timeout, so they have no timeouts left. All they really wanted to do there, of course, is stop the clock. So Cornell will kick. Charles Watson at the five. Damani Leach. At the 45, it's a good snap. It's a beautiful kick. It goes over Leach's head, inside the 10. He picks it up at the five. He's in trouble, looks to turn the corner. He does, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Unbelievable. 
unbelievable kick by Watson. That's the second one in the fourth quarter. That one is huge. That's the second time, though, in the fourth quarter. He's he's come up with a big punt right when the Cornell needed it. Now Princeton's starting. They have to go roughly about 80 yards here in a minute 17 with no timeouts. Princeton comes out with a minute 17 left. They'll have a first down and 10 at their own 18-yard line. And they'll go out of the shotgun with twin receivers to the left side. Now Kelney looks over the Cornell defense. He rolls out left side. Fires. Caught, but out of bounds. Catch was made, but Crowley was well out of bounds, so it goes as an incomplete pass. And it stops the clock with a minute nine left. So now Princeton with second and ten. But more, more important really is the clock. Only a minute nine left. And the Tigers have no timeouts left. Back to throw McKelney. He fires. Crowley makes the catch crossing over the middle. And a beautiful tackle on the far sideline. Crowley trying to get out of bounds with John Hansen. Nailed him and kept him in. That's a huge play. Not only does they keep him in, keeps him sure of the first down. The first down will stop the clock and at least give Princeton a chance to, to get set here. Third down and one. McKelney fires. Catch made. And that is a first down. Catch made by Ray Canole. And that is at the 37-yard line. It stops the clock momentarily with 42 seconds left. And the Tigers come up quickly on their two-minute offense and McKelney spikes the ball. Stops the clock with 39 seconds remaining. So now the Tigers up at the Cornell 37 yard line, excuse me, at their own 37 yard line. Still have a long way to go, 39 seconds left and no timeouts. Looking to hold on and go 1 0 and beat Princeton two years in a row. Whistles. Took too much time on that, Lou. And that'll back Princeton up five. Delay a game against the Tigers. So Princeton is backed up to the 31 yard line. to throw. He fires incomplete into the Princeton bench. Stops the clock with 33 seconds left. It's a tough situation for the Tigers young offensive team. Something we mentioned, they do have a veteran quarterback coming back, but a lot of those skill players are young players. They haven't been in this type of situation before. McKelney looks to throw. He fires it out. It's intercepted! Picked off on the far sideline by Justin Bird. do it. I think a wet ball uh, victimized Aaron McKelney there. Ball looked like it slipped coming out of there. And the ball just hung up there for uh, for Bird to come and just pick up. Well, all Cornell has to do now is run out the clock. I take the knee once here and that's pretty much it. 26 seconds left and Princeton cannot stop the clock. Should do it. Down to 20 
three seconds. And we wind it on down to 10. And that'll do it. Cornell will defeat Princeton. The Big Red will go 1-0 on the year as they win their Ivy League opener. For Princeton, a tough loss on the road. stiffened up and uh, kept, kept uh, Princeton offense off the board. And for Cornell, a solid victory. They scored 14 points in the first half. Second half, they're held scoreless, but their defense did a solid job. And that'll do it from Shokoff Field in Ithaca. The final score, Cornell 14 and Princeton 10. Tim, thanks for sitting in. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Lou. Thanks a lot. Thanks, partner. Thanks, thanks for getting me through this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it from Cornell for everyone here at SeaTech Cable Systems. I'm Lou Brognaw. Thanks again for joining us. The final Cornell 14, Princeton 10. We'll see you later on this season for more Princeton Tigers football. You've been watching Princeton University football on SeaTech Cable Systems.